Hello, my name is Grandmaster Nick Pert, and this is uh, my third volume of 1D4. Uh, in the first volume, I looked at 1D5, and obviously all Slavs, Queen's Gambit, Declines, anything really that involved playing the move 1D5. In the second volume, I looked at Knight F6, and really all of the openings, such as Nimzo Indian, other openings which uh, where black played knight f6 but didn't play with d5. Uh, however, because these two um, video series were so long anyway, I couldn't really fit in all of the extra um, moves where black didn't play with d5 or knight f6. So this volume three is really just trying to complete the series, trying to cover all those variations where black hasn't played knight f6 or hasn't played d5. So the lines which are covered here, they're actually useful Many of them are useful for one e4 players as well because in a lot of the variations we're actually playing two e4 when black doesn't challenge the center. I'll just give you a quick overview of what's covered uh, within the DVD. So after uh, white plays d4, uh, we're looking at d6, e4, and knight f6 is kind of a perk, or some people call it the pitch or pits. And after knight c3, uh, various different moves, g6 going into the main line, and now we're going to recommend f4. So continuing the theme of being quite aggressive and really putting maximum pressure on the opponent, bishop g7, knight f3. And after this, I'll be analysing moves such as c5 or castle's kingside. Uh, after knight c3, I'll also be looking at the philidor, and again, looking for aggressive lines after knight f3, knight bd7. Um, similarly, if black plays c6 on move 3, we'll be um, studying the move 4f4 um, pretty consistent throughout the whole of the video series. After d4, black can also play g6 into a modern with bishop to g7, so not, not committing the knight to f6 just yet. And then knight c3, and again after d6, f4 yet again. And here I'll be looking at different fourth moves for black, such as a6, c6, knight c6 and trying to show how white can um, put pressure on black uh, in each of those variations. After knight c3, I'll also be looking at uh, c6 with the idea of playing d5. Again, we're recommending f4. And I'll be looking at the move c5, d5, which does lead to some Bononi structures without the pawn on c4, and also leads to uh, variations such as the sniper. And this will hopefully give you an idea of how to combat each of those uh, variations. As well as the Bononis and Moderns, I also spent a lot of time looking at the Dutch. So my main recommendation, originally I was going to try the Staunton Gambit with 2e4, but uh, there were some lines where it seems quite hard to prove an advantage for white. So instead uh, I changed back to Bishop g5, which can still be quite aggressive, and I think there's a better chance for white to prove an edge after Bishop g5. Obviously that covers players that play f5 on move 1, but it doesn't cover players that play e6 on move 1. And uh, because our repertoire is very much d4, c4 based, I'm looking at the move 2, c4 against e6. And that means that uh, quite a few extra openings have to be covered. For example, within the Dutch, uh, after e6 and then f5, I'm going to be recommending the main lines with g3, knight f6 and bishop g2. And then looking about how to deal with the Stonewall Dutch and how to deal with the classical Dutch where black puts the pawn on d6, as well as uh, looking at a few sidelines such as bishop b4 check. Um, as well as the Dutch, I've also covered the accelerated Bogo engine, which is bishop b4 check on move two, looking to block that with bishop d2 and then all of the variations which uh, might arise from that. I've also looked at the move two b6 and then taking on the gauntlet with three e4 into the English defence, bishop b7, bishop d3, when black has various replies, including the move f5. Um, also looked at the move 1, pawn to b6, so d4, b6, e4, bishop b7, how to handle that opening. I spent quite a lot of time looking at 1c5 as well. So c5, we're going to meet with d5 again, just trying to find a critical variations in against all of these different openings e5 and then e4 d6 and uh knight c3 
and analyzing how to play these lines with white. So various different setups that black can uh, choose against us. Look to d4, knight c6 when black might be hoping to transpose into a chigorin. And here I'm going to recommend the move d5. Again, the, yeah, the most critical move. Look to d4, e5. The English, I think it's called the English gambit or England gambit. Also d4, b5. d4, c6 where black doesn't play d5 just to try to find other ways black might try and move order you into a different system. And um, yeah, I think pretty basically covered everything that um, wasn't covered in the first two DVDs. Um, anything which doesn't involve the move knight f6 or d5 at an early stage. I think um, it's a pretty comprehensive uh, video series and hopefully it's useful for you even if you're an e4 player because it kind of gives you a repertoire against openings which may be slightly more offbeat and um, slightly less uh, regularly played but openings where black is really I think trying to reach a double-edged position from an early stage so as a result of that we're able to gain a bit of an advantage I think in all of these lines because they're slightly riskier black setups and not as solid as the traditional lines which come after d5 or knight f6.